northwest of WA has an amazing range of reptiles, doesn't it? Like, why is it such a good place for reptiles? Oh, so many reasons. It's a real biodiversity hotspot. Reptiles are part of that. It's an ancient landscape with heritage in Gondwana. So you've had chance in an ancient landscape with that sort of origin for lots of species to evolve. Yeah, what sort of species? I know there's that amazing little barking gecko, isn't there? Beautiful little Oh creature. yes, yes, there's yep, quite a few gecko species, including the barking geckos you say, marble geckos, some of the stone geckos. So yeah, big, big variety of those. And you've also got skinks, yeah, little tiny squiggly ones, big fat skinks like bobtail. So yeah, big, big range of those as well. Taking advantage of that range of landscapes. And legless lizards too, there are some amazing legless lizards. There are, some look like small snakes, some look like small worms, and they again have a heritage in, in Gondwana. Let's talk about some of the threats to reptiles in the Kalamunda area. What do you think is the biggest threat, Mike? Well, the biggest issue is loss of habitat from clearing for housing in the suburbs. Yeah, and I guess that then causes fragmentation, doesn't it? Because the connections between those patches of urban bush are lost by clearing for housing. That's right, you get left with little patches of bushland, they're isolated by roads that reptiles can't cross, and also, of course, you get the steep curbs around roads that are barriers for many small reptiles. Another problem is cats and foxes, I guess, too. Well, they're very efficient predators, of course, indeed. So keeping your cat inside is a really easy thing that you can do to help reptiles in your suburb. And then another issue are the poisons that we use around our homes. We poison, use poisons to poison insects and pests like that. They can also get into the reptiles and kill them as well. Another problem for reptiles is solid fences. Often animals like bobtails need more than one garden to make their home. So if you have a few little gaps in your fences or the old picket fences were great, then that allows animals to move and find enough food within their territory. So if you're going to provide things in your garden for reptiles, you need to start thinking like a reptile. There are four S's that we like to talk about. Sun, shade, shelter, and snacks. Easy. So let's start with sun. Why do they need sun? Well, reptiles are, are solar powered. They have to warm up. So they need sun, some sunshine to be able to get themselves warmed up so they can get out and, and go and do things. So I guess a nice patch of sun, but then some shade so when it's hot, they can tuck themselves away and, and hide from predators and, and stay cool. Now, shelter, that's a good one. Mike, what's this you've got here? Okay, th this is a gabion wall under construction. It's a metal frame mesh with just old bricks, in this case, shoved in there. It can be used as edging for paths or driveways, and it just provides lots of nooks and crannies for small reptiles to hide in when they're sheltering. There are lots of other simple ways you can provide shelter for reptiles as well. Things like old tiles. In fact, I think we've got one here, haven't we? We have got an old tile here. <laughs> here we go. Bit of, bit of ridge capping. Great habitat for small reptiles, or even things like bobtails. Pop them down, too heavy for cats to move, so it's great shelter for reptiles, nice and dry, cool, a bit warmer during the winter. And you can sort of add to it with the odd flat rock that reptiles can slip underneath or between. And being heavy, then cats and dogs can't access the animals. And they're sheltered there from the sun, from predators, excess heat, excess cold. Mm. And I guess this is also a bit of a lizard lounge too. Oh yes. But, a great place for a reptile to bask. I'll just see a bearded dragon basking on a nice dark rock in the sunshine. Then when it gets too hot, it slips under a dense bush and has a bit of a cool off. Yeah. So we've got lizard lounges and reptile retreats. The leaf litter that we've got here is also great for reptiles to hide in, provided you're not in a fire prone area. If you're in a fire prone area, then it's quite good to use a gravel mulch or something that doesn't burn. But if you can have small patches of leaf litter, it provides great shelter and also it's really good for that next S, which is snacks. Snacks, yep. So reptiles need obviously to eat and having native vegetation in patches provides insects, which then the reptiles can eat. And of course, some reptiles will eat plants as well. Bobtails eat some plant material and bobtails are great pest controllers for things like snails. Many of the larger reptiles actually need more than one garden 
to live in, don't they, Mike? Oh, they do. They need to move around with the neighbourhood. They need to go visiting, visit friends, <laughs> make babies if you like. And um, so having gaps under fences so they can access different gardens is really quite important. By adding some of these features to your backyard, you'll be able to share your space with some fascinating reptiles. And if you want to find out more information about reptiles and other fauna and how you can help them, you can hop onto the City of Calamunda website.